In this lecture, we are going to look at medium access control for IoT devices and network. So how is medium access control for IoT devices different from conventional wireless devices? So in case of traditional Mac, that means that medium access control for conventional wireless devices, what we want is that there should be low latency. What it means that any device that wants to communicate get can transmit without having to wait for a long period of time to get access to the medium. Second, there should be high channel utilization. That means that there isn't a period where the channel is not being used for any communication. So there are no unoccupied periods. And then it should be fair that all devices have sort of like fair chance to get access to the medium. However, the, the reason why medium access control for IoT devices is typically different from uh, a conventional Mac is that in IoT devices, we have an power consumption as one of the key consideration. So we want to have medium access control mechanism designed in a way that it, it allows communication to consume as least energy as possible. Furthermore, most of these sensors send small amount of information. Hence, typically for these applications, the channel utilization is by default very low. So the question for us is, how do we under these constraints, that is low data traffic and energy consumption to be as low as possible, design a Mac protocol that are different from what has been used in conventional wireless devices. So to answer this question, let's look at what are the main sources of power consumption in a medium access control protocol that is contention based for IoT device. It is overhearing the transmissions. These can be transmissions that are not meant for the device, but it is uh, happening over the air. It could be the overhead of sending control packets. These packets could be like RTS, CTS, and other acknowledgements. And it could be data transmission, reception, and the uh, uh, and the idle listening, which are the active uh, modes. So among these different data types, only one, two, three with, uh, occurs when there is a data transmission happening between two nodes, while the idle listening occurs even when there is no traffic that is uh, there over the air. So let's look at medium access control protocol and different states in a greater detail. So this is a typical timeline uh, or life cycle for a medium access control protocol. The green part are the one where the nodes are in idle listening mode. And the red part is when the communication is happening. So it is one of these one to three state that we have talked about. And typically when you have uh, in this particular example, you have idle listening as dominant as the communication period. Now, as the amount of traffic reduces, that means your application is sending less and less data over the air we find that the idle listening starts to dominate and the red period goes uh, significantly lower in proportion. And when there is even less traffic, it's basically uh, the idle listening is dominating the life cycle while there is only small period where the radio is in active state, which is either idle, transmit or receive. And typically this last state is the one where the IoT devices are typically, you will find their uh, medium access control mechanism to be operating in. So however, we find that the idle listening can be an extremely energy expensive. It consumes significant energy, especially as the traffic load decreases. So idle listening allows these radios, uh, the significance of idle listening is that in the idle listening, these radios can receive the transmissions that are sent to the node. So let's take a step back. There are two nodes, uh, two modes at which the uh, typical uh, IoT device radio can be. Uh, low power mode. One is the sleep state where it's totally inactive and it's just consuming few microwatts. The challenge with the sleep state is that your radio, when it is in the sleep state, if there is a packet transmission uh, address to the node, it cannot receive because it's in the sleep state. However, if the radio is in the idle listening mode, it's not in the transmit or receive state. But if there is a transmission that happens address to the node, then the, this particular node can sort of like quickly uh, put the receiver into the receive mode or the radio in the receive mode and receive this transmission that is sent to the particular node. So your radio has to be in the idle listening mode for it to successfully receive packet. So as we have talked about that the idle listening can be power consuming. So if you do, do not want to perform idle listening all the time, how do you ensure that you will detect the transmission that are sent to the node? And that's the key question that we want to sort of like look at. So ideally, we would want to design medium access control protocol where the radio is heavily duty cycle. That means it's uh, spending most of the time in the sleep state, some time in idle state, and even lesser time in the transmit and the receive state. 
because this ensures that the power consumption for the radio remains very low. So uh, one thing that we want to actually also see is that overhearing packets, that is the, any transmission that is happening over the air and that is not meant for this particular node can be actually extremely power consuming task. So we would also want to have the radio not only on, not in the idle listening mode, but also in sleep state so that it doesn't hear these transmissions that might not be meant for the particular device. So the question is, how do we actually have the radio designed in a way that it wakes up and it is in these low power states and uh, somehow we schedule it in a way that it wakes up at the right time. And that's sort of like is the key caution that we want to sort of like address. So let's look at this uh, these questions in a greater detail by looking at a protocol that you have uh, 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 learned before, which is a very simple medium access protocol called Aloha. So how does Aloha work? Basically, it just transmits data when it has to transmit, basically. So it doesn't perform any channel sensing, nothing. It just transmits the data. And the Aloha protocol actually typically works great when the channel utilization is low. That means there is less traffic over the air. The Aloha protocol works great. So the protocol works when there is no contention and there is less traffic. For the But one thing with this Aloha protocol is that we have assumed that the receiver is always listening. But this might not always be the case, especially for IoT devices where we want these devices to be duty cycle. That means that they are sleeping for most period of time. So if you want to take this Aloha protocol and convert it into a duty cycle variant, what changes would you want to make in this protocol so that it actually operates in these duty cycle IoT devices? So if you look at, for example, uh, uh, so this is sort of like the timeline for a Aloha uh, protocol that is modified for this duty cycle nature. It, it has something called preamble sampling. So what does it mean? So let's say you have a sender and one receiver. What receiver does is that it remains in the sleep state, but if basically it performs this channel sensing task regularly at a certain period. So let's say the receiver wakes up at a period of every TP and performs channel sensing for a duration of TS. And the transmitter or the sender now, instead of sending just a data packet, also sends a long preamble. And what this preamble does is that when this long preamble intersects with the sensing period, that the receiver knows that there is a data transmission that is happening and it, it sort of like goes into the uh, wake state and starts to receive the packet. Uh, and if let's say it figures out that this uh, transmission is not meant for this receiver device, it can go back to sleep. So the downside of the, in this implementation, you could sort of like have the receiver duty cycle, but the challenge is that the, now the sender has to send a long preamble to wake up the receiver device. And as we have discussed again and again, that transmission is a very power consuming task. And in this mode, the, tra the transmission becomes actually quite uh, power consuming. So it can, it is more efficient from just keeping the radio on, but it is less efficient because you have to send more information over the air to wake up the radio in some extent. So building on this, let's look at uh, one of the first medium access control protocol uh, uh, for IoT or sensor network that implemented uh, some sort of duty cycling to conserve energy. And this protocol is called BMAC. So BMAC is an asynchronous protocol. What does asynchronous mean? That the different nodes in the network are not synchronized to have the same notion of time. And it is one of the earliest IoT protocol. And how does it work? So the it's similar to what we have talked about actually previously. So the nodes sleep for most of the time, but they wake up periodically and they check channel for activity. That means, is there an ongoing transmission? And if it checks that there is an ongoing transmission, then it remains awake. Otherwise, it goes back to sleep after a certain timeout. So consequently, again, to ensure successful reception, the transmitter has to send a long preamble uh, and typically it is much longer than the channel sensing sign. So if your receiver is sensing channel at a period of TP, your tra transmitter has to ensure that the preamble is sent that is longer than this uh, sensing time for it to wake up the receiver device. So in this protocol, the idle listening occurs when the node samples the channel. So if, for example, if the channel is being checked for a duration of 100 milliseconds, the transmitter has to send a preamble that is 100 milliseconds long. So this protocol is great from receiver's energy efficiency perspective, but maybe not as much from the transmitter. So of course, BMAC is not the most energy efficient protocol. The challenge is that the transmitter needs to send a very long preamble. And we have talked about that it is very power consuming task. 
So on the receiver side also, there is a long waiting period as it has to wait to receive the entire preamble and then it receives the data transmission. So if you are sending a 100 millisecond long preamble that the receiver has to wait to receive the entire preamble before it receives the data packet. So it has to spend all this energy remaining in the idle mode so that it can receive the data packet that is being addressed to the particular node. Hence, a lot of energy is wasted in this uh, protocol, both at the transmitter and receiver side. So while it is efficient compared to just keeping the radio on, it is not as efficient as we could probably make the protocol to be. But it is it was one of the earliest uh, medium access control uh, protocol. So how do you improve BMAC? One approach that was adopted by was with a protocol that was called XMAC. And instead of sending sort of like a pre long preamble, what it did was that it, it used to send small probe messages and there was gap between these probe messages. And these probe messages also had the address of the receiver to which they, the node wanted to communicate. So the, the receiver side would check the, uh, the probe messages and, and then send an acknowledgement back to the device sending these probe messages uh, uh, during the gap period. And then the, after receiving this acknowledgement, the data transmission would happen. So let's just look at it from the with an example. So let's say we have three nodes, which all of them are operating with an XMAC protocol, node V1, V2, V3. And in the case of node V1, we are V1 is wants to send transmit data to the node uh, V2. So what happens is that basically node V1 sends uh, these uh, strobe packets, and these strobe packets are addressed uh, to node V2. And when the node uh, V2 hears for the strobe packets, it sends an acknowledgement back to the node V1. And after receiving this acknowledgement packet, the node V1 sends the data to the node V2, it receives it. And after receiving the data, sends another acknowledgement to say that, okay, there has been successful data transmission. So what happens to the node V3? So the node V3 receives this probe message and figures out that the, it, this probe message is addressed towards the node V2. So this node V3 goes back to sleep after hearing this message. So here the key innovation is that we are not sending long preamble, but small probe messages, which also allow other nodes to sort of like go back into the sleep state. So you have used Contiki operating system during this course. So Contiki operating system actually even improves this uh, XMAC protocol by sending actual data packets. So instead of sending now pro messages, you are just sending actual data messages and the receiver actually performs this channel sensing task and figures out, okay, there is a data packet and tries to receive this message uh, and then send back an acknowledgement. So uh, in, in a way, then uh, the receiver, once it receives data packet, can go back to sleep. So that was a, an optimization that was done by the Contiki Mac. And all of these are called, uh, are sort of like these Mac layer protocols as sort of like sender initiated or sender sort of like focused. And that brings us to another uh, question. So while these protocols looked at uh, sort of like receiver doing continuous channel sensing and then sending long preamble or strobe or data packets from the transmitter, is there another approach that we can design these medium access control protocol to be more efficient? And this is the approach that is adopted by some uh, protocols which are called receiver initiated. So what does it mean by receiver initiated? So it means that the transmitter, instead of transmitter being a sort of like receiver being channel sensing, it's a transmitter that sort of like wakes up now and then and listens for a period of time. Now the receiver nodes frequently wake up and send small packets uh, to announce that their presence said, okay, hey, uh, now I'm up and it sends this message to the transmitter. Now the transmitter listens to these uh, small messages and initiates the transmissions to the right uh, receiver that has woken up and communicated its uh, presence to the transmitter device. So what is the key advantage of this protocol? The key advantage is that it requires much less transmission and there is less collision and consumes much less energy compared to the uh, some of the protocols that we had talked about. So let's look at it in a bit more detail. So here we have S and R. So receiver basically wakes up, sends a beacon message, which is then received by the sender device. And then after it receives this message, the sender sees that, okay, I have some data to send and it sends it to the receiver device. And then after conclusion, it actually sends back an acknowledgement message. So here the roles are reversed and typically the receiver device is in more in charge of the communication with the sender device. And these are called receiver initiated Mac. So with this, we would like to come to an end of this lecture, but I would like to highlight that these are like some of the historical medium access control mechanisms that were developed. A lot of other mechanisms were also developed over the years. So for you, the key takeaway should be that uh, we want to keep the IoT devices to be as duty cycled as possible. And there is a challenge in terms of how do you sort of like ensure 
that your duty cycle while you're not losing out packets. So you can adopt mechanisms such as sending preambles or sort of like sending data packets or even receiver initiated, or there are other mechanisms that have been developed. So these are sort of like the high level uh, takeaway that I would uh, suggest that you take from this particular lecture. And with this, we come to an end of this uh, part.